We'll call our public hearing to order at this time. Our public hearing tonight is for ordinance number 2022-05. Mr. Stahl. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance number 2022-05, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Fort Oakthorpe approving the de-annexation request for tax parcel number 0013D002 to be de-annexed from the municipal boundaries of the City of Fort Oakthorpe and into the unincorporated area of Catoosa County to change the corporate limits of the City of Fort Oakthorpe to reflect the de-annexation to repeal conflicting ordinance and other related purposes. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either in favor of or in opposition of this de-annexation ordinance? Mr. Young, if you'd just sign your name there at, at the podium and uh, announce your name to the council. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, I'm here on behalf of the property owners uh, and also the individual or company that has a contract to purchase this property. Uh, as I outlined in the, uh, the memorandum we submitted uh, that I hope made its way to all of you with our de-annexation request, uh, this particular company already has a contract to purchase the adjoining 41 acres that goes out in front on Battlefield Parkway. That is located in the county. That has been rezoned by the county uh, last year to a PUD planned unit development primarily for residential uh, purposes and it would be almost exclusively 100% rental uh, catered to uh, retirees, mostly or young professionals. There is a commercial out parcel uh, that there are no plans for at this time on the county piece. Uh, that would most likely be sold at some point down the road to a commercial user that may frankly want to annex back into the city but after this developer uh, went through the county process he realized pretty quickly he needed a second entrance off Deets Road for safety and aesthetics uh, when he was not able to acquire actually a right-of-way for that he approached the property owners who have the seven acre track that adjoins and he has a contract to purchase it from them subject to either de-annexation of this piece from the city or annexation of the 41 acres into the city. Uh, both pieces need to be either in the city or out of the city to make the development work. And it's my understanding that the city prefers, since it's a residential rental component, that this property be de-annexed as opposed to the other piece being annexed. Uh, the county has agreed uh, to take this uh, back if the city approves the de-annexation and zone it as PUD, they approved that by resolution in February. And I'm happy to answer any questions. When the county approved it, Mr. Young, was did they approve it with the circumstances being that front parcel would be commercial? Yes. On the PUD that the county approved, uh, the front par parcel is commercial, and they also approved it subject to there being with GDOT, an entrance, of, I think they're, the way their engineers submitted it, the, uh, the cut through didn't exactly line up with the drive through, and so they wanted to make sure that that took place too. Thank you. Thank you sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either in favor of or in opposition of this de annexation? Mayor, doesn't appear anyone else is present. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. This time we will call our regularly scheduled council meeting to order. Mr. Stoltz, if you would please call the roll. Yes, sir, I sure will. Mayor Earl Gray. Here. Jim Childs, Councilman. Here. Craig Crawford, Mayor Pro Tem. Here. Derek Rogers, Councilman. Here. Rhonda James, Council Lady. Here. Paula Stennett, Council Lady. Here. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Let the record show we do have a quorum for tonight's meeting. This time we do our invocation and our pledge. Miss James, if you would please do the invocation. Miss Childs, lead us the pledge, please. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you today and thank you for giving us another beautiful day like you've done today. We pray for this city, the citizens. We pray for all the employees, especially our police department. Pray that you keep them safe. Now that we go about the business of the city here tonight, we pray that you be with the council members here that we make the best decisions that we can. Lord, we also want to pray for those in Ukraine and Russia. 
We pray that you be with those people and help them. We know that they're hurting right now and that they've lost loved ones. We pray that your grace be on them. Lord, now we ask this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will set the agenda for tonight's meeting. Ms. Yoon, I understand you have one change. Yes, sir. Uh, the removal of item number four under new business, the recommendation toward the operation of Florida Farmers Market, Statement 41. I request that it be removed. All righty. Anything else? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Have a motion to amend the agenda, striking item number four under new business. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Childs and second by Mr. Crawford. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The agenda has been set. Next item on the agenda is the minutes from our previous council meeting that was held on February the 28th. If members of council have had an opportunity to review the minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Ms. James, second Ms. Childs. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation. Ms. James. This is from the Office of the Mayor, City of Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, proclamation. It's Child Abuse Prevention Month, April 2022. Whereas children are critical to Fort Oglethorpe's future success, prosperity, and quality of life. While children are our most valuable resource, they are also our most valuable, most vulnerable. Children have a right to be safe and an opportunity to thrive, learn, and grow in an environment that fosters healthy development and whereas child abuse and neglect can be prevented by supporting and strengthening Fort Oglethorpe's families, thus preventing the far-reaching effects of maltreatment and providing the opportunity for children to develop healthy, trusting family bonds and consequently building the foundations of communities. And whereas effectively intervening in the lives of children threatened by abuse is a shared responsibility and Fort Oglethorpe citizens must come together so that the voices of our children are heard by all. We all must ensure that our communities are extending helping hands to children and families in need. And whereas effectively child abuse prevention strategies succeed because of partnerships created among citizens, human service agencies, schools, faith communities, healthcare providers, civic organizations, law enforcement agencies and the business community and whereas by providing a safe and nurturing environment for our children free of violence abuse and neglect we can ensure that Fort Oglethorpe's children children will grow to their full potential as the next generation of leaders helping to secure the future of this city this state and this nation now therefore I Earl Gray mayor of the city of Fort Oglethorpe do hereby proclaim April 2022 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, and urge families and communities to become involved in protecting Fort Oglethorpe's children. Thank you, Ms. James. Are they here? They're right there. Come on up. Come right up here in the front. Give you that. It's heavier than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna say congratulations and council wants to come around. We'll get a picture here while Brian's there. Mike. Can Mike come in? Oh, sure we can. <laughs> Mike's on our board. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Get whoever you want in there. Next item on the agenda tonight is appearances. 
Uh, first one is uh, Ronnie Wilson. Mr. Wilson present. Let the record show that Mr. Wilson is not present. Next on the agenda is Chris Heppenstyle. Did I get it right? <laughs> I, I knew it wouldn't be exact. Hepton stall. Hepton stall. My name is uh, Chris Hepton stall. I'm the executive director with Environmental Research Center located at 306 Joy Street. I'm also here today on behalf of uh, Chris Carlton, which is the owner of the building where Ari Michael Heat and Air Company resides. I'm also here on behalf of Adrian Long, which owns the Joyland uh, Daycare and Kids Castle uh, facility. Um, I wanted to, uh, I'm here today to talk about the property known as MAP 0002. G0010 E lot 7 which is the uh, Bent Sparks property uh, Joy Street that's currently zoned as I1 requested zone for C2 for an overflow for uh, repossessed vehicles uh, I'd like to make it clear that I'm not here to to hinder the the business or the growth of the repossession business uh, with that being said, we would like to see a site plan of what the intentions or what the company is going to do with this particular piece of property. Um, I will tell you there is a, a big problem with uh, water on the property. Uh, this is approximately a half acre. Um, I've walked on the property when it's been, you know, no rain for a week and it's saturated. But not only is this, this piece of property saturated, there's, there's homes in a cul-de-sac that, that butt up against this piece of property and their backyards are saturated and, and their front yards are saturated. So it's, it's a problem. Uh, as I understand it, there's gonna be some kind of impervious surface put down to, to put these vehicles on, whether it's gonna be gravel, whether it's gonna be asphalt, I don't know. Um, but there, there's going to have to be some place for all that half acre of water to run off. I can tell you that any time that, that we get a hard rain, um, the ditch that runs on Cross Street floods heavily. Uh, there's a ditch that runs behind my property and the Ari Michael Heat and Air Company property that floods. Both of our um, docks flood heavily. And so now we've got a business that's, that's going to come in and, and add an impervious surface. Where, where's that water going to go? There is a retention pond. If you're looking down at the end of, of Joy Street on the left, uh, but that obviously is not working because the, the water is just standing uh, in this area where this, where this lot is currently. Uh, and I'm, I'm concerned that if they do put in that, that, impervious surface, whatever it's going to be, is going to have to be built up and therefore it's going to create a berm or a dam for the water that's coming from the, the uh, I guess the road down into that cul-de-sac where those, where those residents are. Um, yeah, so, so we, just, we just want to be able to see a site plan, you know, that will address where all this, this overflow of water is going to go and, and we don't know that right now. I think there's an issue too on the, on the back side of uh, Kids Castle Daycare and Joyland. They've got a ditch as well and, and again when we get a hard rain that floods and actually flows over somewhat into the Fountain Book Apartments entrance. So we've got all this, this water that, that's coming through and now we're going to add another half acre of water so we, we just need to see some kind of site plan on you know, what is the company going to do to address this issue. And so I'm here to ask how that site plan is, who's going to do it, how's it going to be developed, how, how, what's the process? That's fair enough. Rick, yeah. have yeah. you seen any plans? No. I don't think it's gone before zoning yet. Well, yeah, this it point, has this once. Is yeah. We're planning advisory just for zoning. Right. District, not when it gets to the, to the stage where we have to review it for soil roads, we'll, we'll do that. 
They even provide that until most of these zone cases, they wait and make sure they can get the zone that, and it still may not even happen. If he creates an impervious area, a 5,000 square feet, it's going to change a lot of stuff. You'll have to do hydrology, a lot of stuff, and he may not be able to do it. But he, he can't do something that would impact, you know, residents or owners just at will. I mean, he's got to meet a lot of requirements. We, 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 we will take that under consideration, make sure <laughs> yeah. that nothing happens that was going to affect anybody else. And, and two, you know, the, the next question is going to be the liability. You know, if, if there is an issue with, with flooding, you know, my business, Ari Michael, the, the daycare centers, I mean, who's liable? Is it, is it going to be the property owner? Is it going to be the city? Who's, who's going to be responsible? Flooding wouldn't occur from him. He, he, can't, he can't create something that's going to flood you out. I mean, his is a standalone project. You, you're, you guys may have projects that were built before the requirements that may need ponds and things of that nature. His project is going to be a standalone that will be, you know, where he's got to provide that project, he'll have to provide. Whether it's a pond or a retention or something. So, will, will there be a site plan in place? Is he'll what I'm asking. Yeah, he'll have to provide this office yeah. something. To you. Yeah, it just be at will. Yeah, you have to buy Yeah. So before before anything gets gets dropped, before vehicles are, are put okay. there, you're you're gonna get a site plan and can we can we view it? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a public thing Yeah, before it's yeah. actually approved there'll be another public hearing just like Is that on the twenty eighth? Three It's different. I don't know when it's on do you know the twenty eighth is coming? the zone. Yes, sir. No, the plan advisor already, you guys have it on the, yeah, the 28th. It'll be the 28th. The 4th. Yeah. It's for the zoning part. All right. And, mm -hmm. and we'll have a public hearing just like tonight, and you and anybody else that wants to come are certainly welcome to come back the night that it's on the agenda. Okay. But, I mean, could you clarify, Rick? He's not going to have plans that night. Or he no, may. They, they won't do that. I, I'm just from projects until they get there. A lot of this, they don't, they don't go that far and spend. You know, they'd have to do hydrology plans and get that approved and do, <coughs> it may not need it. it. They got a lot of homework for it. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, us. Right. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll try. <laughs> we will look at this hard. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Next up is Miss LaDuc. Hello, I am representing the shop which is located on 113 Heron Street in the city. We received a letter on March 4th regards to Delta 8 which is legal in the state of Georgia. We were told by the sheriff that all of our products contained THC at a illegal level which it does not we were also told that the chief didn't get a letter neither did any of you guys I have sent it in an email I think I covered every one of you guys I'm not sure I've talked to so many people if not I have the letter it's been provided to them okay thank you um, I have went and personally talked to as many shops as I can this is a lot of tax revenue we have took eleven thousand dollars out of our store alone he gave us until the 30th to remove, but we went ahead and removed it all. Because we're not going to sell anything that's illegal, because we were told that they would come in and take everything, because we're a vape shop as well. We're here today to see what can be done. I know the sheriff has authority over the whole county. I get that. But to see where we basically stand as a city, as far as this goes, is there an ordinance that can be put into place? Something. Because it is legal. It's a legal substance. How do you guys, t how do you know? We have our COAs right here to back okay. it up. I've got them for every product that we have in-house. <laughs> and I know that there is stuff out there that is illegal. I, I get that. I I've seen it but we want to know where to proceed from here and where these other businesses, the CBD Plus, the liquor store up above, we're on Heron Street, right where he was just talking about. We're right up from you guys. 
they were hit. A lot of other stores around us were hit. Because, like I said, we don't want to move from this area. We love it here. We love our customers. We love our, I call them my patients. <laughs> I love my people. We don't want to have to be forced to move out of here. We give a lot of taxes just to the city and a lot to the state, but we don't want to move. So we want to know, know where to move forward from here. That's a hard question. We, well, I think we can answer it. You may not like the answer, but... <laughs> I'm getting a lot of that. The enforcement does come from our city officers and from the state of Georgia. With, with the Delta-8, it, it is legal as long as it is 0.3% or less. And all of ours... However, if yours is purchased and it tests higher than the 0 0.3%, then it's an illegal drug. Okay, because we have all of the stuff to prove that it doesn't. Well, I know you've got the labels from your manufacturer and from your distributor. I think the problem comes when that product is actually tested. Okay, tested. That's, that's actually where you get a court case, where you contend that it is legal and the state whoever contends that it's illegal then you have testimony your testimony the state's testimony and then at that point in time there is a determination of whether it is legal or not legal in fact this is a not this is not just a local issue no, this is a this is a this is a national issue mm -hmm. And in fact, there was an attorney f in Gwinnett County today, or yesterday, no, today, filed a lawsuit uh, uh, asking the court to declare this Delta-8 legal. So basically, I think the, the, my advice to the city is, to, is basically let's wait and see what's happening and see what in fact uh, comes of this lawsuit. And that was in Gwinnett County, and I'll be glad to give you the, the reference to no, the I've attorney. I've spoken with Mr. Okay. West myself personally. So, okay, um, so, but I think that that's our, I, I would recommend to the city the position, let's see, wait and see, because this is, I mean, I've, I'm reading articles from Kansas, from Indiana, uh, and, and, and it just simply, uh, uh, a hair a gray line in the law that basically needs to uh, needs to be addressed and i agree with you it does need to be addressed um okay and that's all i have thank okay. you guys thank you thank you next item on the agenda is ordinances first item under ordinances is ordinance number 2022-2022 05. Mr. Stokes. Ordinance number 202205, an ordinance of the mayor and council of the city of Fort Oakthorpe approving the de-annexation request for tax parcel number 0013D002 <coughs> to be de-annexed from the municipal boundaries of the city of Fort Oakthorpe and into the unincorporated area of Catoosa County to change the corporate limits of the city of Fort Oakthorpe to reflect the de-annexation to repeal conflicting ordinances and other related purposes. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. I have a motion to approve the de-annexation. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Crawford, a second by Mr. Childs. Any discussion? Ms. Stenning. Yes. Ms. James. Yes. Mr. Rogers. Yes. Mr. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Child. Yes. Motion carries unanimous. This parcel is DNXed out of the city of Fort Overford. Second item under ordinances is the second reading of ordinance number 2022-06. Mr. Stoltz. Ordinance number 2022-06, amendment and modification of the personnel ordinance of 2021-17, an ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances, City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, employee personnel policies to provide for amendment to the employee personnel policy by resolution to provide for the provisions therein as authorized by state law, to provide for modification, to provide for severability, to repeal conflicting ordinances or parts thereof, 
to provide for an adoption effective date and for all other purposes allowed by law. Second reading, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Item number three under ordinances is the first reading of ordinance number 2022-14. Mr. Stoltz. Ordinance number 2022-14, amendment to the City of Fort Oglethorpe Code of Ordinances by creation of the Lafayette Road Overlay District. An ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances, City of Fort Overthorpe, Georgia, to adopt the Lafayette Road Overlay District to amend the City's Unified Developmental Code, Chapter 2, Article 3, Section 3.2, to address the issues of public safety, health, and general welfare of the citizens and sojourners of the City of Fort Overthorpe, to provide for the use, visual, and architectural character of the Lafayette Road Overlay District, to provide for development and redevelopment of land uses and buildings in the Lafayette Road Overlay District, to amend the official city zoning map at Chapter 2, Article 1, Section 1 1.2, to provide for provisions therein as authorized by state law, to provide for modification, to provide for severability, to repeal conflicting ordinances or parts thereof, to provide for an adoption effective date and for all other purposes allowed by law. Mayor, this ordinance is available in city clerk's office uh, at business hours. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Next item is new business. Item number one under new business. Request to approve a special event. I missed one, didn't I? Nope. No. Okay. Good. Request to approve a special event permit for an event honoring law enforcement at Honor Park. Chief Haymans. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of Fort O uh, City Council. I'm Jerry Haymans, Chairman of the VCC, Veterans Citizens Council, and Tree City USA. The VCC is sponsoring an event at Honor Park on 14 May 2022 from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our theme, Honoring Those Who Served, featuring uh, Georgia law enforcement and followed by a fundraiser for the Children's Act Advocacy Center. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> and, uh, okay, the special event permit uh, for 14 May 2022 was submitted on 3 February 2022. And the uh, VCC has re uh, retained an insurance policy from Thimble Insurance Company for a million dollars uh, for the event. And uh, our premium was $211.43. Okay, the VCC is requesting that the Fort O City Council approve the request for 14 May 2022 event. And third thing is the VCC is requesting a waiver for the city event fees on the 14th of May 2022 uh, as we are bringing uh, recognition to veterans, officers, uh, all of our citizens here at Fort Oglethorpe and recognition to this uh, historic city. Thank you for your time and support. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Child, second by Mr. Rogers. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number two under new business. Request to approve a special event permit for vintage baseball events at the Barnhart Circle Polo Field. Ms. McKeever. Ms. McKeever, before you begin, I would just like to say thank you to both 
uh, you and uh, Chief Heyman, this, you guys were our guinea pigs for this new process with special events. We really appreciate all, you know, you going back and forth with us about the questions and checking all the boxes. Thank you all very much. We've learned a lot and it'll only get better. <laughs> My first recommendation is that you print larger on your page. <laughs> Holy cow. Page. That's like a six font. <laughs> All right, be that way. I know where you live. I know. Where you live. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to come before the city council. It's good to see everyone. Vintage baseball is back for 2022. They did send the seven dates that they would like to play on the polo field, which is on. Um, included on this handout they do have special event insurance that uh, will be instructed to add the city as a additional what? insured thank you as the additional <laughs> insured <laughs> the uh, museum is very happy to host them uh, we get teams from uh, all over the state of Tennessee we get visitors from 10 to 12 different states every year <coughs> so it is a wonderful time had by all and uh, we're asking you to approve our special event request. Thank you, Ms. McKeever. I have a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second, sir. Motion by Mr. Crawford and second by Ms. Stinnett. Any discussion? Good weather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and All then. Say aye. 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 And then the dates will be announced to you so that you can come and throw out the yep. first pitch. Sounds That's good. always fun. You it, you pitch <laughs> underhand. You don't have to be that good. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Motion carries unanimous. Item number three under new business: request to approve a special event permit to hold an opening day baseball and softball parade on Lafayette Road. Mr. Ellis. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, in years past, the Fort Worth Recreation Association has always uh, held a small parade to uh, recognize all the players and coaches that are participating in baseball and softball at the recreation department. Uh, and this year we'd like to bring that back and have a, uh, a parade from Big Lots parking lot uh, down Lafette Road uh, to Barnhart Circle uh, to collaborate with our opening ceremonies. Uh, so the recreation department requests that the council approve this request for a permit for the parade. What day is it? <clears throat> it's um, April the 16th. Saturday, April 16th. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. I have a motion to approve. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Third. Fourth. <laughs> <laughs> I think a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. Crawford. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Next item is item number five, recommendation to award a contract for the rehabilitation and repair of Stable 41. Mr. Ellis, before you start, you might want to tell everybody what Stable 41 is. <laughs> uh, well, from what I understand, Stable 41 is an area on 2nd Street uh, in Fort Oglethorpe. Um, it's basically a whole block of buildings there and at one point from what I understand in history uh, there was a horse stable there that was named stable 41 so uh, the city has purchased uh, some property there and we're calling it stable 41 and uh, we're looking to uh, do some things in that area uh, and that's what I'm here to request tonight I think you got it right. Chris nodded, so that was good. All right. <laughs> that means a lot that you nodded. Because <laughs> you know. 1,500 horses take up a lot of space. Yeah, so that's, that's a neat little area. So uh, my item of business is to recommend approval to award a blanket contract for the rehabilitation and repair of the Stable 41 Pavilion to various contractors in an amount not to exceed $200,000. Uh, for over a year, the city of Fort Oglethorpe has been engaged in a strategic planning process geared toward revitalizing the historic district along the Lafette Road corridor. And throughout this process, the public has repeatedly said they want to see in Fort Oglethorpe activities and events that are family friendly and showcase the local community. Uh, to aid in that effort, the city invested in property in this area on 2nd Street and now intend for part of that property 
to house a weekly event space and to get this event space, Stable 41 Pavilion, ready to use as, as, as space in time for late spring and early summer months, the Recreation and Leisure Services Department recommends that the city award a blanket contract that will include various tasks in need of completion at the facility. Uh, if awarded, quotes will be obtained from vendors for the various tasks to be performed, uh, not to exceed $200,000. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. I have a motion to approve. Make motion. a motion. Second. Motion by Ms. James, second by Mr. Childs. Any discussion? Can't get it done quick enough. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Mayor. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Item number six under new business. The proposed ratification of the finance director, Ms. Hughes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council, as you all know, our long-serving finance director, Pam Trevelyan, retired in February. Um, we were sad to see her go, but happy for anybody who gets to retire. Um, and now we have undergone an interview process, and um, I would like to request that you all ratify Philip Minton II as the city's next finance director. He has 20 years of experience in finance. He is a Catoosa County resident. His children, his child goes to Heritage High School. Um, he served as a director and a chief financial officer for various organizations in the private, educational, healthcare, and nonprofit sectors. Um, he seems very team oriented and very excited to begin. We're looking forward to, um, to bringing him on. You all ratify him. Thank you, Ms. Hume. I have a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Crawford and a second by Mr. Rogers. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Next item on the agenda, city manager's report. Ms. Hughes. Thank you. A um, few things tonight. Uh, first of all, happy St. Patrick's Day week, everybody. Um, you can take the girl out of Savannah, but you can't can't take the savannah out of the girl, I guess, when it comes to St. Patrick's Day. Um, we have had a lot of questions about our overlay ordinance. Um, I know it's, it's, it's generated a lot of interest. We will have drafts of that ordinance. Um, it, it will undergo some changes potentially, so there will be amendments to it, but just know that we will have drafts available for you in the clerk's office if anyone would like to have a copy and see what the map looks like and all that. Same is true of our package store applications. Um, they're available online and in the clerk's office, but uh, recently we've been getting a lot of questions from people and so to make sure that we're answering all the questions the same way every time we're going to publish a list of frequently asked questions to the city's website uh, so that people can just pick them up and read them and, and get the same answer every time. That will be available probably within the next week and we'll update it as questions come in. So if you or anyone you know has questions, please email them to us um, so that we can get them posted to the website as quickly as possible. And that application period will close April 25th uh, at 5 p.m. Um, also, thank you to, for the, to the Child Advocacy Center tonight and its board members for coming um, to spread awareness about the work that they do. And Anthony Dye is a member of Leadership Katusa, so he's here tonight in that capacity as well. So welcome, Anthony. Um, and also, as we heard earlier, April is recognized as Child Abuse Prevention Month, um, and the Katusa County Defects who we share our building with is going to be uh, raising awareness by planting pinwheels in front of City Hall, as I believe they've done in previous years. There'll be about 50 blue pinwheels for the entire month of April to kind of constantly remind us um, of the work that they do and of, of Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, I also wanna say thank you to Jeff for his public work staff being ready for the blizzard this weekend that we had. Um, <laughs> you guys were ready, even though it wasn't necessary, but you were ready and that was great. Um, and thanks to the chamber and to Rhonda on the planning commission and the committee and everybody else. It was a super fun time at the, at the gala. It was a good time. And I also would like to say thank you to the DDA for coming and joining us last week at our overlay workshop. We really appreciated all your insight and the, it was encouraging and, and it was good to have all those different, um, ideas floating around. So that's it for me. Thank you, Ms. Hume. Next item is mayor and council comments. Although you couldn't tell it by Saturday's weather, <laughs> spring's just around the corner. I think you can tell that by our agenda items. You know, we've got quite a few special events that's coming up. I won't steal Mr. Crawford's thunder too much, but it, I, they're still signing up, Greg, or is the sign-ups over with? It's over. The sign-ups are over with, but the game is going to begin. Well, so, they uh, started this week. 
Hey, we encourage you, you know, even if you don't have one playing, to come out and watch them and, and, and cheer them on. We, we looking forward to it. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. We don't have a river we can turn green. If we did, we would. I got a but, creek. Uh, <laughs> There's a creek by my building, too. <laughs> but uh, the spring's on the way, and everybody be safe out there. Mr. Child. All right, daylight saving time just changed, and uh, everybody needs to be patient driving down Battlefield Parkway. We have some heavily traveled intersection and there's wrecks constantly so and I'm, I'm one to be talking about patience but uh, I do I'm very safe driving and it can save a life or save a arm leg or whatever so everybody just slow down <laughs> and don't run a red light <laughs> thank you mr. child mr. Crawford yeah I just like to say uh, uh, to coach Ellis if he's still here in his uh, staff this weekend we did have our uh, so-called preseason tournament. I think it was a little bit uh, uh, <laughs> changed a little bit the format just to get people some games and stuff in. They obviously didn't play Saturday, but uh, Sunday the they were able to get the fields ready and people uh, got out there in the cold weather and and managed to get some games in. It actually turned out pretty yesterday, and they're doing it this week. So. Uh, uh, kudos to y'all, good job, and then I just like to say congratulations to uh, Council Lady uh, James for being uh, named Citizen of the Year this weekend. So, uh, great honor, well deserved. Congratulations, Rhonda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I was going to say congrats to Rhonda as well. I was there that uh, on Saturday, and the minute they started, you know, yeah, I was. the minute they started reading the citation, I said, I think this is Rhonda. I know, I started to cry. <laughs> yeah, and then they mentioned David's name, and I obviously knew it, but uh, um, it was pretty cool, and she does a lot in the community, and she really deserves it, so congratulations. Thank you. It was That's a it. shock. I could tell. You. I could tell. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Rogers. Miss James. I want to say thank you to Anthony and your folks coming out tonight. And I'm glad we could do that for you guys. Appreciate it. And happy St. Patrick's Day. We're green. There you go. Thank you, Miss James. Miss Stinney? Yes, sir. Congratulations again, Miss James. And I was I was so proud of you when I saw it Saturday night. It was a great, great time had by all. Thank you, Chief Hamans, for being here. And I'll reiterate what Chief Hamans was saying, that on Saturday, May the 14th, from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. in Honor Park, a tribute to those who served, we will be hosting our annual event. And this year, we'll also be honoring law enforcement and doing a fundraiser for our Children's Advocacy Center with our art sale. So it'll be a great day at Honor Park, a tribute to those who serve, located on Claiborne Street here in historic Fort Oglethorpe. And luck of the Irish to you all. I'm Irish, I can say that. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Stinney. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Crawford, second by Mr. Johns. All in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Aye.